For thousands of years, the Mississippi River has wound its way throughout the heartlands of North America toward its final destination with the Louisiana coastline and the northern Gulf of Mexico. The Mississippi River is arguably one of the largest and most important river systems in the world. The sheer scale of the numbers speak for themselves. The Mississippi drains an area of more than one and a quarter million square miles, an area larger than the country of India. All or parts of 31 U.S. states and two Canadian provinces contribute their water and sediment to the river. Like a giant conveyor belt, the Mississippi has been delivering this sediment for thousands of years to the greater Louisiana Gulf Coast region. This has resulted in the creation of a giant sedimentary deposit, a pile of silt, mud, and fine sand, which geologists call a delta. Native Americans and later European settlers have been drawn to this massive river as long as history has recorded settlement here. Settlers have always dealt with the negative effects of living near such a dynamic natural resource. Flooding along the banks of the Mississippi is a natural function of the landscape, yet wreaks havoc on communities along its banks. In order to control the Mississippi, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers long ago began holding the river back with a complex series of dams, locks, and spillways. Here, at the old river control structure in central Louisiana, the U.S. Corps of Engineers has its most daunting task yet, to prevent the Mississippi River from changing course entirely. The old river control structure was built for one primary purpose, and that is to keep the Mississippi River within its own banks and along its current course. Without the help of mankind, naturally the Mississippi River wants to change course into the Atchafalaya River Basin, cutting off the ports at Baton Rouge and New Orleans. If left alone, the natural course of a river's life cycle involves its natural search for a shorter, steeper path to the sea, a process geoscientists call avulsion. Through avulsion, the Mississippi has been depositing the silt, mud, and sand it carries in a series of migrating delta lobes, swinging like a pendulum between present-day Texas and coastal Alabama. Today, the river wants to take a new, faster path to the sea, one currently occupied by the swamps, bayous, and marshes of the Atchafalaya River Basin. Students and faculty from the University of Oklahoma and from the University of New Orleans recently took a field trip out to the Louisiana Gulf Coast to look at some of the modern-day sedimentary processes at work. The trip afforded future geologists an opportunity to learn more about the ultimate effects of a transgressive geologic system and how it's causing the loss of Louisiana's coastline. Part of the problem here, the reason that the shoreline is receding okay, and that marshes are being lost is that there's no new sediment coming into the system because of that. Louisiana's coastline is undergoing rapid erosion and land loss, in part caused by the Mississippi's inability to change course and deliver needed sediment to the coast. We're in a sediment-starved system. That's really the problem, is there's just not enough sediment to keep, to keep these areas above, above wa the water level. This lack of sediment, coupled with a relative rise in sea level, is what geologists call a transgression or what do we call it when a shoreline shifts in a landward direction? Transgression, we got a transgression going on here, okay? The implications are that we're losing the wetlands that we need in order for um, fisheries, as well as uh, say Port Fouchon and the infrastructure that it provides, all right? So restoration projects to preserve some of those uh, vital wetlands, all right? Barrier islands, such as the one comprising Grand Isle State Park, are important for protecting the fragile Louisiana coastline from the damaging effects of hurricanes. Like much of Louisiana's coast, the islands too are disappearing from beach erosion and relative sea level rise. As sea level rises and land subsides, water gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until the beach you're standing on no longer exists. Ultimately then, what's going to happen to that barrier island system as transgression continues? Complete submergence. Government agencies, universities, and conservation groups 
are working hard to counteract the inevitable loss of Louisiana's fragile barrier islands. Keep in mind that these projects are, are all the disciplines are coming together, okay? We do have the geologists, biologists, the ecologists, the plant people, the fish people, because we're, we're trying to recreate habitat and also come up with a reasonable engineering solution that provides some sort of protection here, all right? So a lot of different people involved in this uh, restoration. One of the most dramatic consequences of the alteration of the Mississippi Delta Plain is evident in its largest city, New Orleans. New Orleans is one of the oldest cities in North America. It has a long history of colorful and carefree culture, food, and fun. However, the geological clock is ticking for the Big Easy. Due to subsidence, or sinking, of the land beneath New Orleans, the city is now an average of eight feet below sea level. With the loss of the barrier islands along the coast, continued land loss, erosion of the coastline, and subsidence under the city proper, New Orleans is more threatened than ever. Geology has profoundly affected the lives of Louisianans and the constantly changing landscape of southern Louisiana.